It's interesting when we talk about the Bible. I can talk about the Bible, but uh, what am I going to use? There's many versions. And through the changes in the different versions, they should be, as the name suggests, something you should have an aversion to. This reality has made it, and I was very much like this, as soon as you hear the mention of the word the Bible or Jesus or anything, you're sort of repelled by it, which is understandable because of the way it's taught. It makes no sense when it's taken as a literal story. But once you get beyond all these literal layers to it and see it in the metaphysical the Bible is not a book, it is a guide that's within you. This is a perfect sort of analogy really. When we talk about the Bible, it's like we're talking about the one, the Christ. There are many. And they're guides to help you find your way through and navigate. Unless you're, you're going to go along with the idea of there is only one Bible, so who's actually got it? Which is the Bible? It's not a physical book. It's a metaphysical, spiritual history. It is also your autobiography. It's to guide you to find that Christ conscious, that spiritual, eternal being that you really are, not the material conscious aspects, not the body, not the five senses, the, the things that feel and sense things in this reality. Let me put it as a question to you. If you've got a you catch your leg, you've got a nasty graze on your shin, on your shin bone. <coughs> it can hurt, or you stub your toe. <clears throat> and often you get bruising, and you can see it as well as experience it. But what about a broken heart? I think a lot of you can relate to how that feels in one way or another. But show me the physical evidence of a broken heart. It's never been seen in the physical, and yet many can relate to it. It's all in the feeling. So the Bible will come as a download, as it were, when you do the meditation. When you're raising that consciousness up, it opens up a whole new dialogue. Again, going back to that encyclopedia salesman, you've got to be fairly thick-skinned out there. Not everybody wants to buy this set, you're, and you're trying to push a set of volumes onto people. You're giving them volumes and volumes of information at an extortionate price. And it's a thankless task. But occasionally, you'll get lucky, you'll make a sale, you'll communicate sales pitch in a way that others will hear. It's all about frequency and sound after all. So those that are hit those that are in are meant to hear will hear. Those that won't won't, you might as well speak Japanese to them to be honest, because they won't hear it. And just again, just observe. Be apart from it and observe it. Because what you'll find is a lot of people just want to talk at you. They don't want to hear your responses either. They're not listening. They're not hearing it. Because they're not, they've not done the inner work. They've not put the effort in. This is what it comes down to at the end of the day. It's how much do you desire something. So if you have this desire... 
You don't want to be a sinner by missing the mark. You want to follow this through to its ultimate. The ultimate is both the beginning and the end. Again, show me where this starts. Show me where this ends. Watch also those signs by the day. Thomas Sheridan, I just uh, watched his latest video, and he's saying that... Um, You've got Egyptian vultures circling over England and over Ireland. It's a sign by the day. It's also telling you that there is nothing new. That's already happened a long, long time ago and continues to happen. If you look at the historical overlays that have followed the scripture script, it's been enacted as like a great play, using that as a guide. But not using it as a truthful guide of enlightenment, using it for ill-gotten gains in the material and the physical world. This is why you have an Egyptian stone under the coronation throne. You have the Egyptian room after there's a coronation of the next king. It's why you have a pyramid on a dollar bill. All little clues. Things that you can observe. It doesn't matter whether it's nature that's showing you or the system that's showing you. You'll just be presented with these things and it's a case of... Hmm. I've seen it. I was meant to see it, otherwise I wouldn't have seen it. Something's got my attention. Now, is that what is it trying to do? Is it trying to get me to immediately react? Or should I sit with it and think, how should I respond to that? What is this message trying to tell me? So the way to do that is to go into meditation. But you don't actually think as such. You switch off as best you can that side of things and you let it naturally flow because it will come. I would go so far as to say no matter what science and biology will tell you that the spark of creation is known only to the creator, the universal consciousness Nothing to do with the physical at all. It's something else, something beyond human comprehension from a mortal perspective. From an immortal perspective, it makes perfect sense. Because this script is being played out. And there's a distinct, uh, there's a huge distinction with this. On the one hand, you have imag imagination and you have creativity, which comes naturally. Or you have using that as a basis because the other side cannot create, it can only replicate. It can only twist it and adapt it into new forms. You'll see that everywhere in the external. It's just a repeat loop of the same story being told and shown over and over again. It's where the discernment from doing the meditation comes in and from the experiences and things that you've already gathered that you can now draw on. Things that you probably at the time thought was something bad, something horrible, something negative. But when you come through out the other side of it, you'll see that it's just a step on a, it's a It's a chapter in an ongoing story of which you are playing a part in that story. But you get to write your own script. You don't have to take the scripts that are offered to you. It's where the intuition, making an informed decision, the key part of that is in, because it all starts within and then radiates out. Whether it be 
shown to you on the external or whether it's going on inside but you'll feel it inside whatever I talk about you'll put pictures to your feel things you either agree with what I'm saying you'll be interested in what I'm saying or you'll be repelled by it or it won't resonate it won't communicate with you that's going to depend on how much inner work you have done how much you're prepared to do for yourself the external reality is all about doing and yet the spiritual the metaphysical is all about doing nothing it's just about being being in a state of being how easy is that and yet how difficult it's, it, it might seem and how so many are lured by the external by the bright lights and the distractions and oh I've got to look at this and I've got to look at that and I need to do this and they don't your intuition will guide you there will be things that come up on YouTube recommended for you if it resonates watch it there may well be a little pearl of wisdom in anything you'll be drawn to it just trust in the process and a whole new world will emerge from it and it's actually wonderful it's makes you want feel like you want to go to the top of a mountain and just announce this to the entire world say if if only you could feel how i feel inside ah oh, sharing the good news you could say but regardless of whether you're coming into this from sort of a more sort of a religious sort of language or whether you've rejected that if you go down the mytho mythological and traditional route of say European history you'll, you'll find these same stories you'll find these same, same characters just with different names it's not something distinct it's not something any different just trying to think of an example here uh, I, I think probably the best example is the ring cycle where Wagner has fused together all the German mythology and created this cohesive story out of the different strands but you can still see in that the same characteristics the same outcomes the culmination of this 15 and a half hours of this music drama called the ring cycle it ends with nature taking back gold returning to its state of natural beauty natural being for everybody to benefit from and appreciate it's not this self-serving thing that's been forged into a gold ring that to wield power over others but that again is going on within you it's expressed in the new testament as jesus goes into the temple and upturns the money lenders tables so what's that that's the the conscious part of the brain that is oh if i do that that's going to benefit me because you're wanting you're doing something and expecting something in return it's not freely given even from the thought of that so the christ consciousness in the meditation will upturn the money lenders tables because it's not about usury it's about a divine spiritual truth a divine spiritual story that we're all personified expressions of that are going through doesn't matter what language is used and all these labels forget about things like Jordan and Egypt and Sinai and that they're just 
labels that represent something else. It's not the actual River Jordan. It's not the, 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 the nation that you know today called Egypt. Egypt basically is anything that is the external world. Again, the terms like world and earth, it's talking about this, your universe. They're just words that express exactly the same thing. So don't be fixed. Again, it's like Danny says, and, and I've said it about observe nature, observe the trees. They grow to the, towards the light. They're rooted in earth. They interlock and help each other when there is a storm. They bend with the wind. They're flexible. They're not rigid. They're not fixed. They're not clinging onto fixed ideas. That's the old world. But you're trying to bring this new world order within yourself. And it's such an easy thing to do, and yet seems so difficult to do. <laughs> but isn't that always the way? When you're looking at the external, it looks so complex, it looks so difficult to try and piece together. And you won't find the beginning, you won't find the end, you won't find any answers out there. All you'll find is babble and confusion. The answers are all within. And by extension to your higher self, you get those downloads. Because the World Wide Web, the internet, it's just a mirrored artificial reflection of, of spiritual, metaphysical truth that exists but appears to have no substance and yet it is everywhere around you. It is everything that is solid, everything that is or appears to be solid. <coughs> it is every physical thing and it is every space in between. It appears to be something and yet it appears to be nothing but it is still a thing. It is still of substance whether you can sense it or not. Because if you're only working with five senses and using the eyes of the deceiver that's letting in the false light. You're still out in Egypt. You're still wandering round. You're still going through your 40 years in the desert. But you can cross the Jordan in meditation. You can enter Jerusalem. It's here. And it's also from here, the heart. It's this new alignment within yourself, this vertical alignment. Even physically, we're expressed as being upright beings, but how many are being upright be beings? How many are groveling and subservient and giving away their power to this system? Because they're looking externally, they're believing in what they're being shown externally is the truth. How far from the truth is that? It's, uh, it is all illusion. It is all mi mirrors. But it's like a fog. You are that lighthouse that is shining a light out onto that screen and bringing the real light, the real sun into this reality. So, second video of today. Um, again, totally impromptu, unplanned. But yeah, just be observant. Don't be in the thick of things, a thick fog, a, a pea super. Because you get lost in it. Be the observer. You need to know where you are. And we're not talking about physical locations. We're talking about knowing where you are centred within one's self. Ta-ta for now.